Hello and welcome to your Community Chat. I'm your host, Ali Hammer, and today we're interviewing Adele McDonald, the Head of Technology from NAB. Adele, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you begin by telling us a little bit about the monoliths that your team managed and why you wanted to move away from a monolith functionality? Yeah, we have multiple um, monolithic apps. Um, we've kind of collected them over the years. The bank's been around for nearly 200 years. So um, from the beginning of online um, banking, we support all of our frontline bankers using um, mainly monolith um, assets across all different divisions. So when you think of a bank, anything kind of in a branch, um, anytime you call into our call center, someone will be um, communicating to the rest of their teammates um, using monolith uh, technology. And then of course, we've got all of the other things that you need to run a large um, corporate enterprise and that you know has a huge collection of monoliths as well. When I first started this role, uh, we went through this huge collection of assets and it was quite a discovery for us because we had everything from you know, COBOL, Pascal, Delphi, Lotus, Java, .NET, um, plus, you know, all of the new languages with React, JavaScript, etc. But it was more than just the coding languages. It was also about, you know, how the bank was set up. And so what would happen is you'd have this application that did a specific function, but it had a duplicate application uh, for a different function in the bank. So actually through this discovery, we could see all the ways that the bank had tried to set itself up to run its business at different stages of its life. And so I found that really quite um, interesting. I think a key reason why we wanted to break up the monoliths was exactly that, the fact that we had duplicate features. Every time we have, you know, um, let's say for instance, account management, management or we might even have um, customer details in multiple applications we've got to manage the code in that application um, if a regulation comes out we'd have to then update you know 70 plus applications and obviously that's not value add money for the bank and so um, by focusing on breaking up the monolith we're actually making it a better bank uh, for you know our shareholders and our customers. That makes sense. And it's so great that you've achieved a reduction in code and maintenance as well. So Adele, what were the biggest barriers to breaking the monolith? Because, you know, it's quite a big task. So can you share with us some of the challenges? There's a, a lot of challenges. First of all, um, you've got to get agreement on data models. Um, you've also got to look at, you know, potentially at some points having scaffolding. So I call it scaffolding. I don't think it's a you know, professional term, but um, effectively when you're trying to run a business, you need the business to keep running while you're trying to actually carve off pieces of technology into modular functions. And so to make sure that that works together, you know, there's extra bits of code and that can also cause an issue, um, you know, with tech debt. Um, architecture uh, doesn't necessarily like tech debt. Um, and so you've got to have some really difficult conversations to be able to enable a business to uh, move themselves towards uh, modern technology, um, but actually keep managing the business in a, in a cost effective manner. The other key part to that is, you know, the messaging and data. So if you think about how we, um, you know, use um, requirements tooling where we'd actually just share, um, you know, applications that would do our collaborative tooling. We would, you know, all log into the one space and we would edit on, onto that one screen. Um, when you go back to some of these systems, the volumes of messaging and the sending of messaging everywhere and the duplication of that messaging and then trying to find where the data is at any particular point to make sure you've got an accurate source is, you know, um, quite a challenge. Um, and so getting the data in the right spot is a huge key for breaking the monolith as well. Thanks for sharing, Adele. So how different is the software development lifecycle now that you're working with microservices and what has changed? And I guess what I want to know is what has stayed the same as well? Yeah, lots changed. I think if you look at the, the cost of non-production in your software development lifecycle, that's 
you know, a massive decrease. You're going from not just maintaining, maintaining production, but obviously you do more change in non-production uh, as, you, as you do your development. And so you, you effectively have, you know, five or six sets of infrastructure that you've got to maintain all at very various different states. When you move to microservice technology, you can remove all of those uh, long running environments. You can actually start doing development. Whatever's in the code repository is the truth. And then you can spin up the environments and that's a huge cost saving. Um, also straight through processing is a, a massive win for the business. Um, if you think about all of that messaging we were talking about, um, if there's a delay, so let's say for instance, you've got five teams, those five teams would get a message and then they've got an SLA for let's say a day or two days. Well, not only are you causing a delay to the customer times five by two, but you're also then not knowing where your data is and then not having a clear picture. So then people start doing status updates. So, you know, if you multiply that then by millions of customers and millions of transactions, you know, the cost of not having straight through processing is quite significant um, operational expenditure in the millions. So that's something that's really, you know, quite important about this architecture. Um, and I think, you know, meeting compliance objectives um, are drastically improved because you can build them into your code. And that means you build them once, but you might deploy them in several different areas. So I think that that's really great. Um, and also just um, the amount of people that you have at your disposal to do change work that's value add because previously you would have connected them to an asset and then there would be like a group of people that would hang out with that asset and everything for that asset just went into that group of people but now you've got teams of people available to do whatever the business needs um, in order of priority and that becomes a very powerful resource for market share so I think that that's pretty cool. Wow, so many great outcomes. And Adele, AWS has a program called DevAx, and I've heard that your team have had some involvement. So could you tell us a little bit about, first of all, the program and what you've gained from it? We've really gained uh, a lot. I think the first thing is, um, you know, the mindset. Like, um, just remember um, when I um, started working here, people were still looking after assets that had COBOL, et cetera. So all of that mindset really was able to be reset by people actually being able to see what new technology does and how it's different and why it's worth, um, you know, investing in themselves and also for the company to uh, learn new ways of working. Um, also, it's just a clear side of what patterns we needed to break the monolith. We were very proficient at doing a huge large scale transformation for lift and shift for cloud. Um, but some of the assets, you know, we couldn't actually rehost. Re and so being able to work out how we're going to break them up um, and then, you know, across the different kinds of architecture, how we'd be able to do that at speed because we would be able to reuse those patterns was really clever. Um, and I don't think that we would have been able to, you know, get there in a matter of, you know, a few days training uh, without having that, um, that time, um, both on the concepts, but also equally um, in the labs. So that was really good. Um, also the benchmarking. So, um, you know, you've got your team and everybody goes to a course, but after the course, how do you know that they're going to be able to come back um, pick up a piece of work um, and get a business outcome. And, you know, really the whole purpose of DevAx was to sort of come back with good solid outcomes. Um, and, you know, we worked together with Amazon to um, come up with a strategy of how we were going to um, report back on uh, what happened when we went home by ourselves. Um, and so that was really good as well. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Adele, to round off this interview, what advice would you give to other engineering managers in terms of helping teams tackle monoliths, you know, and going to microservices? Because you guys have been, done such an amazing job and I'm sure a lot of people watching this would really benefit from the advice. Yeah, I think, you know, attending DevAx would be an excellent start. I think it's just 
the concepts, understanding the different types of data sources and how you want to work with different strangler patterns. Um, and then just being able to use the tooling in a cohesive environment, you, you might go back to your day job and use tools that are there. But I think what's really important is that you've actually know what good looks like. Um, and then that you can always strive for continual improvement. So for engineering managers, I think it's really about, you know, looking at your team, look at the skills that you've got, but equally look at um, what you can build with the engineers that you have today um, and really um, set some goals about how you can actually change uh, what you have to do um, within your business as usual work um, by breaking up your monoliths. Adele, thank you so much for coming on the show. NAB is definitely one of our poster childs when it comes to, you know, breaking away from the monolith functionality and moving towards microservices. So thank you so much for sharing your experience. And if anyone has any questions, please pop them in the comments section below and we'll get back to you. Thank you so much, Adele.